the time is finally here, the preparation is all done, it's time to paint the warp smith. If you want to see my journey to get here, you can watch some videos up here if you want to. But the abridged version is, I'm a videographer who's new to mini painting and I'm clearing my pile of shame and learning to paint through YouTube tutorials. I wanted to paint an Iron Warrior warp smith, but had no idea where to start. So I followed four tutorials to get a feel for it. Number one was from Peter Wargamer, two from The Painting Coach, three from Mr. Tooth and Coats himself, Duncan Rhodes, and four, Juan Hidalgo. Please go and follow them if you don't already. They have amazing tutorials on how to paint Iron Warriors. I then painted up two test marines of my own, taking my favorite elements from each. Admittedly, I did try really hard on these, but adding the brush to the verdigris, it's all a bit much. In hindsight, I think they're a little busy with all of the extra effects, but I'm glad I went too far, so now, hopefully, I know where to stop. It's all a learning experience. This is my first character that I've painted, and there's a lot of additional details on the sprue. I know the painting coach painted his warpsmith fully assembled, but I'm not that brave or good, so sub-assemblies it is. I also made myself an order of operations to keep on track and hopefully not forget any stages. I want to reiterate as well that this video is titled How I Paint My Iron Warrior Warpsmith, not how you should paint it. If you look at this and think it looks terrible, one, you're probably correct. Um, and two, I'm just cherry picking some of my favorite bits and just documenting my sort of journey through the process. I don't for a second think that I'm telling you how to do things because I barely know how to do them myself. One issue that I came across that seemed to be a bit more exaggerated this time was the metallic spray base coat not accepting paint very well. I've seen this a little bit before, but never this bad. I think I should have washed the armor with the contrast paint first to help the white paint stick, because um, when I did eventually get a coat on, the texture of it was less than ideal, which we'll come back to later. stage in the process I was making quite a lot of silly mistakes placing the recess shade into some of the little spaces on the metal tentacles and things like that. So instead I opted to use some dark brown pal liner to try and save some of the details that I'd already painted on underneath and it did work exceptionally well. It smells lethal and as far as I'm aware you can't stock it in the UK but you can buy it on Amazon I think it's delivered from Italy or something like that not dodgy at all I think the panel liner was great for the bits in between the tentacles some of the bits in between the fingers it's just one quick dab and it just rushes into the recesses it did feel like cheating I'm not gonna lie but I can't argue with the results so I will continue so at this stage, I'd elected to edge highlight all of the silver areas. I'd painted three of the eight tendrils and essentially had a mini melt there. I wasn't happy with the results and I left it and didn't paint anything on the model for about two weeks. Instead, I painted this monstrosity, which apparently was a better use of my time because it's currently sat with nearly two million views on TikTok. But there we go. Reading that the Warpsmith was up for pre-order individually this weekend gave me the kickstart that I needed to get it in my hands and start painting again. And everything that you see after this was filmed during that stupid 40 degree heat wave that we had here in the UK. It certainly was an experience. It's filmed exclusively in close-ups because nobody wants to see what I look like when it's the hottest day in the UK ever. First step, finishing up the metallics. I eventually got into a rhythm with painting the tentacles in small sections, which kind of worked. If you're doing this yourself, save yourself a load of time and, and just dry brush them. 
I think this was probably one of the silliest things that I did whilst painting this model. It was very time consuming and incredibly repetitive. I have so much respect for the heavy metal guys that do this professionally. Unbelievable. Next up was trying to fix the weird texture on the white panels. I thought I'd paint over it with some more thin layers of paint, but obviously that texture was still showing up from underneath. I don't know what I thought that would achieve. I am an idiot. I didn't want to get into stripping individual sections of models because that's something that I have zero experience with, so is here to stay. Who needs typhus corrosion when you are just terrible? Moving on to more mistakes and things I did wrong. Maybe it was the heat, more likely it was just me. For some stupid reason, I completely ignored my order of operations and I glazed in my transitions on the yellow panels before I painted my black hazard stripes. I don't know why I did that. I've ne never done it before and you'll see why it was kind of bad right now. So from part two of the series where I was looking to find the best way to paint hazard stripes, the version that I'd settled on was drawing pencil guidelines onto your yellow paint and then painting in grey and contrast over the top. Usually I'm just doing it on a base of Avalanche Sunset but I was going from flash kits down to fire slayer flesh and as you can see the pencil is struggling to make marks on the contrast paint, it's not the greatest texture for it, apparently, so that did make the process a bit more difficult. Another excellent example on how to paint minis. You're welcome. I opted to start chipping the hazard lines with a sponge this time, as the smaller details it can bring are way smaller than I'm capable of doing with a brush. I only brought the brush out to do some slightly bigger chips and cover up some mistakes with the black lines when they weren't perfectly straight. I didn't weather the hazard cable. All of my inadequacies are laid bare on this one, unfortunately. I think it looks okay from far away, but the closer you get, the more it falls apart. A running theme with this model, possibly, as you might see in the future. The white highlight looks too thick. The black stripes are irregular and a bit messy. I tried cleaning it up a bit, but I didn't want to make it any worse. So I just got it to a stage where, where I didn't think I'd be able to do any more safely and risk messing it up and having to start over again. So done is better than perfect in this case. I chose Balthazar Gold for the trim, washed it, then highlighted it back up again with Balthazar Gold. It wasn't quite as bright as I'd liked, so I mixed a bit of Retributor Armor into the Balthazar Gold and just went over those top edges again. plasma weapon before and as if luck would have it, Suggs released a tutorial on Masterclass very recently. I struggle with Masterclass because I think it's just out of my league, I'm not ashamed to say that at all, but I feel like I managed to get the general gist. Again, looks okay from far away but starts to fall apart the closer up you have a look at it. I really struggled highlighting the individual coils with Mephist and Red back up from the glazes underneath, but alas, we move on. I Heresy. hate transfers in this heat. I didn't film it in the end because it was stressing me out and you'll notice the footage just goes straight to the base building. Yay! Third time lucky, I've got the transfer on roughly in the right place. Again, looks all right from a distance, just don't go that close. The gray highlight on that shoulder is terrible as well. It was difficult to paint in this heat. So I used a bit of cork to build up a bit of a platform, tore it to shreds with my clippers and then sprayed it Mechanica standard gray. And this is just following Duncan Rhodes' Martian base tutorial from here on in.
So here we have it, the grand reveal. pick apart parts of almost every element of this paint job and say that it's crap. Some of the highlights look like they were put on with crayon, some of the glazing and the blends are a bit meh. I don't like the hazards on the head or the right shoulder, I think I should have just left them metallic and had done with it. But having said all that, to me I feel like this model is greater than the sum of its parts. A few months ago, me and Jeff started this channel. I knew that I wanted to paint an Iron Warriors Waltzmith and I had no idea how. So I set out trying to do it, and I have. Of course it's not great, but it's mine, and I'm happy. Maybe I'll repaint one in a couple of years, put them side by side, and see how much progress I've made. But in seven models, I've gone from these had the stripes, which were my first, and these ones which are my most current, and any progress is good progress. So that is the end of my Iron Warrior arc for now. Thank you so much for watching, whether it's just this video you've watched or all three, to people that have left comments and helped me get to this stage with a completed Iron Warrior. Warpsmith, I am very, very grateful for all of the help and support. Now, I just need to try and figure out what to paint next. Thank you.